We're going to go to Hebrews oh. chapter 2. Let me read it, verse 1. I'm going to pray first. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless this spiritual bread from your word that we're about to receive for everyone's spiritual nourishment. In Jesus' name we pray. There is heart and soul say amen. 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 So I'm going to read here in verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. How can we escape? Amen is the title of the message. How can we escape? Amen. After God has brought you his word, how can we escape? How can we, how can we get out of it? When God gives you his word, he seals it in you. It's putting your ears and you're responsible for the word. You're responsible for what you hear. That's why Jesus said, be careful what you hear. You see, you got to be careful with what God tells you. From the word of God. When Jesus came and he spoke to the people, you had to be careful what you heard. Because now you are responsible for what Jesus tells you. When a law is given and laid down, no matter how old that law is, once it is ordained by the state uh, 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 legislation, or, or legislation, legislation, how do you say that word? Legislator. <laughs> and once that word is brought in, once that law is laid down and they pass everything, you are responsible. Amen. Amen. You're responsible for that word. <laughs> it's funny. Amen. But it says here, let me read verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest. Now look at that word earnest. It says earnest means more serious, the more important. Amen. Give more serious heed, close attention. You better play close attention to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. What are we going to let slip? What's going what's gonna to slip? The word of God. Now we take the word of God lightly in the days we living in now. Nothing is that important now. That's not for us today. It's what people say about God's word. It's not for us today. You see? But how can you escape? <laughs> it's the title of the message. How are you going to escape that butt whooping and day of judgment? Oh, but Jesus is not ready for gay. Me already. I'm already the whole world forgiven. That's what they say today. The whole world, he had already forgave everybody already. But what the purpose of serving him for then? If he already don't forgave everybody, everybody already forgave? Well, I might as well be a Muslim then. Because he don't forgave everybody already. We might as well bomb everything and kill everybody. Because God done already forgave everybody. We all done did it before anyway. So let's don't worry about it because he already forgave him. And if you do anything anyway, he's going to forgive you anyway. So what's the purpose of having Jesus? What's the purpose of serving God? What's the purpose of the word of God? What's the purpose of God's rules? What's the purpose? How should we escape? <laughs> By just a simple, oh, we already saved. Well, doggone it, if I preach that message, then the whole church would be full every week. Because everybody all right all the time. But that's not so. If something could slip. You see? He said, 
Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. You better pay more close attention to what God telling you, to the things which you have heard. You better pay attention to it last or for fear of that at any time. I mean, it didn't say, well, once you already got saved, you always say. No, it said any time. The stuff that God gave you through his word slips your mind. It's going to slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. Now the word says steadfast means proved sure. If the words from angels were proved sure, were guaranteed, and every transgression, every law you broke, every disobedience, receive a just recompense. Just means rightful. Recompense. Recompense means a repay, a reward for what you did wrong. How shall we, the ones that talk about we saved and we breaking every rule that the Bible gave. I don't know what the purpose of the Bible is. If we break everything in it, you don't do nothing about what I'm saying. Because they got something for everything you say that the Bible say. We say, well, that ain't for us now. Well, what about over here? Well, he ain't mean it that way. Well, what about when Jesus said that? Well, you know, we allow, that's all right. Oh, what about this? Well, we say my grace. Well, what about this over here? Well, we, it's, uh, God, we, you can already see it too. What about right here? Hey, God, we all, ain't nobody perfect. What about right here? Well, the Bible, everything. Come on, just throw the Bible in the garbage can then. Amen. That's one the reason we're dating for. There's no reason we don't need it. We just as heathen as any other nation everywhere else. Any other religion, we just as pagan as they are. Because we don't believe nothing. How should we escape? <laughs> so you say you're gonna escape? You're gonna get away. But I ain't. How in the world you gonna get away? I can't get away. You ain't gonna get away. Ain't nobody gonna get away if you ain't got Jesus Christ. So the purpose is gonna be, well, I got Christ. I got Jesus. So I'm cool. Me and Jesus like this. We like that. Like this. We like that. But if y'all like that, well, tell if you can you get some money from him? Because I got our old gas electric over here. Can you borrow a couple dollars and see if I can get something too? If y'all like that, he got two dollars. $3, $400 or something I can put on my rent. Because y'all ain't tight like that. You think you tight like that, you still got to pay your tithes and offer. You ain't that tight. You ain't that close to God. You see? Or he had been took you all to heaven already, right. like Elijah. Why you ain't been heaven then? Because y'all ain't, if you was that tight, you'd be like, Lord, just come get me and take me to heaven. Because like, I'm not tired down here. And then you be took, taken to heaven. All your friends be gone to heaven. Because you cool like that. You and Jesus like that. <laughs> Ain't nobody that damn cool like that. Moses was a friend of God. And so was Abraham. And they had to go through their trials and tribulations down here. And if you break the law, you die. But God made a sacrifice for it. Just in case. He got a sacrifice. That's why Job went and sacrificed all them doggone animals just in case his kids had disobeyed him when they weren't paying attention, when they were drinking or whatever, and disobeyed God. Mm -hmm. You see? You better make sure because how you going to escape? Judgment must first begin at the house of God. You see? At the house of God. And if it start with us, if it begin with us, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You see? Well, we all sinners. What? Everybody sinner? Well, what in the world are we searching for Jesus Christ for? If everybody is sinner? What's the purpose of him? What's the purpose of the blood? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, if the blood of Jesus washed away your sins, why are you still a sinner? When the blood of Jesus Christ washes away your sinners and sinners and sinner people who have sins, <laughs> what does that make you? 
it's still an S word, don't it? Like saint. saint. The opposite of a sinner, flip the coin over, is a saint. And when you're not a saint, you flip the coin over, what are you? A sinner. A sinner. Well, what makes a person a saint? How do you come from being a sinner to a saint? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost and the blood of who? Jesus Christ. How can you escape? Is the question. How are you going to escape living in sin? The Bible clearly talks about living in sin. How are you going to live in sin and God has saved you by his mercy and his grace? There is no way that you can walk in sin and call yourself a saint. No wonder they say you always sin and we live in sin and we're always going to be sinners because you never have turned away from the wicked lifestyle. You will never ever even think about going back to God, amen, who created you. When you are broke down and screwed up in your mind and all that's on your mind is evil continually, then you have taken a journey back to the Garden of Eden when the children of uh, God had disobeyed the law. And they became sinners and so they walked with the devil and they were kicked out of Eden and so they sinned and they were known as sinners until they could find a road back into God's presence. And it took the law of God to bring you back into a relationship with him. It took the obedience of God's word to bring you back into a right relationship temporarily until he sent his son later and that it could be permanently. See, Jesus' blood did the work. Okay, all right. We know that. But if you don't want to obey Jesus, who did the blood sacrifice for you and gave and paid your ransom, then guess what? You ain't right. I'm going to show you a scripture. Uh, let's go over to John 1. And I'm going to close on the scripture over here. John chapter 1. That's good. John chapter 1. That's St. John chapter 1. It says in verse 12, but as many as received him. Somebody say received. received. As many as received him. You see? Some people receive him and some don't. It, uh, Acts 13, 48 had talked about as many as were ordained to eternal life received the word of God. When you when you when you are ordained to eternal life, you believe the scriptures. You see, and so you live the scripture. But as many as received him, to them gave he what power, power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. See, when God gives you power to become his child, it's a reason why. You become a child of God. It's because you receive him. It's because you believe. And you receiving and believing and trusting in God is powerful. Because that snatches you out of the flames and fires of hell. That's what pulls you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. It's your belief system that proves your faith is true. See, because when you have faith in a thing, you will walk in that thing. You will believe and you'll start doing things that proves that you have faith in whatever you say you believe in. You see, the Hebrew boys, they went on through the fire because they knew they had a God they could serve. They had a God they could depend on. And God delivered them out of the fiery furnace. God said, I got your back. And the Hebrew boy said, listen, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't have to be careful to answer. You ain't got to think about bowing down to you. I ain't going in that fire. And I said, I mean, I ain't going to bow down to you. And I said, you can throw me on in the fire. Because our God is Able. That's what they said. That's their testimony. That our God is able. Able to what? He able to deliver me. And if he don't, I still ain't going to bow down to you. I'll just burn up in a fire. 
lot of us are scared. We're scared to go through the fire. Scared to leave.